Yo, what's going on, guys? Crispy Flakes here. So it was just released that James Wiseman is going to be making his NBA debut in the starting lineup for the Golden State Warriors. And this is going to be such an interesting storyline to follow early on the NBA season that we obviously have to talk about it. So before we get going on today's video, need to let you guys know, man, if you can please hit that like and that subscribe button because we are, of course, shifting towards NBA discussion and stuff over here on the channel. Although I will be sprinkling the occasional rebuild just because I still enjoy doing them. But yeah, man, really trying something new, trying to branch out, grow the audience. So by you guys smashing that like button, that subscribe button, guys, it really does help the channel grow so much, man. Thank you all so much for that so yes james wiseman this will be so interesting to follow because obviously like we know what the potential of him can be especially in a golden state warriors type of system but the thing is this guy was the second pick in the draft but he missed most of his college career after he left i believe it was memphis uh due to it had something to do with like i don't know if he actually took money if it was reported he took money from like penny hardaway or something like that regardless um at this point that was like damn a year ago right man so yeah we did not really we did not have summer league uh i don't think we saw him at all in the preseason or anything like that like essentially this is gonna be going from playing like two games in college or whatever it was to hey you're starting the first game of the nba season on the warriors against kevin durant and kyrie irving that's got to be terrifying as heck, man. I feel like we are going to see a lot of things early on from him. But at the same time, I do think that we are going to see a lot of rookie mistakes because he has a lot to learn and going up against, you know, Kyrie driving to the basket or Kevin Durant, um, anybody, the, the, the best centers of the NBA are going to struggle with that because those guys are so extremely talented, right? So what do I expect from James Wiseman going into the season? Well, I will say it is definitely going to hurt him that Klay Thompson is out. I mean, obviously you have Steph Curry, who is the greatest shooter of all time at the point guard spot. So, you know, there's still gonna be a lot of good opportunities for James Wiseman just to like not get double teamed in the post or anything like that because you're not gonna double team the rook and you leave Curry wide open but that would have been excelled to the next degree if Clay Thompson was out there who is also one of the best shooters in NBA history so you lose a little bit of that I mean Kelly Oubre will be nice at the small forward spot Andrew Wiggins um isn't exactly a splash brother he's more like a brick boy out there but he can still like knock down the shots like you don't want to leave Andrew Wiggins wide open I mean if you have a choice I guess you probably would right but oh no regardless like it's gonna be interesting so James Wiseman as far as his stat line goes this season it, it's so weird because I feel like due to not seeing like March Madness and especially James Wiseman not seeing a lot of him in college like I do remember watching some highlights of the games he did play and he looked pretty damn impressive man like he was a good center he's very mobile nice lefty uh can knock down the mid-range shot can probably knock down the three-point shot eventually so he can do a lot of different things out there it's just what's that stat line gonna look like I feel like this season because Wiggins and Oubre are both obviously going to be pretty utilized in the offense. Draymond Green's never been much of a scorer. So when he's back from his injuries or whatever, you know, he'll probably put up his traditional eight points, nine rebounds, a billion assists or whatever it is that Draymond Green is going to give us these days. So there's going to be a lot of scoring opportunities, I think, in the post. Um, and I think it's going to be a lot of shot opportunities. I think it's going to come down to just like confidence and the ability to make the shots and stuff like that. Because the way he can score the basketball, I feel like kind of like in comparison... I really don't know if this is much of a player comparison, but I think it's more so like, I think, I feel like James Wiseman is going to be what we thought Marvin Bagley was going to be or could be, you know, prior to the injuries and everything like that. I mean, I still feel like Marvin Bagley can be a great player, but you know, just kind of like one of those mobile 6'10 to 7 foot centers that uh, can do a lot on the basketball court. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch regardless, but for a stat line this season, I'm going to say, man, they don't really, use the, like, like the Warriors are not like notorious for using like offensively their centers a lot right like guys like marquise chris did fine um andrew bogut was fine javel mcgee was always fine on that team uh did i say kevon looney like he set screens and stuff but as far as like a highly utilized center i mean bogey when he played i feel like he had like 16 and 8 games every now and then but even him he was like consistently in and out of the lineup so a good center top two pick in the draft that can do pretty much anything with a basketball i think wiseman's gonna average like I would probably say 16 and 8 is actually a pretty good prediction. I could see him doing something like that because you're still going to have um, Draymond Green grabbing rebounds and stuff like that. So I don't exactly see Wiseman going out there and crashing the board, giving like getting like 15 rebounds or nothing. But I feel like offensively, 16 points, eight rebounds, probably a few assists. You know, just uh, simply being in the post or whatever, or even dribbling in and you know cutting to the basket. So I feel like there's going to be opportunities to hit guys like Steph Curry for threes. I feel like just like playing with Steph Curry, your assists go up by at least two per game, right, man? So I kind of see that from him, but. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun to watch not too much he's really he, well he's he's a, he's a solid defensive player i still think that that could be one of the growing pains because in college and stuff i mean 
or even going back to his high school days, you know, when you're seven foot tall, of course, you're going to average a lot of blocks. But in the NBA, a lot of guys are just kind of like narrow that athletic gap. So I do think um, he's going to have some issues early on with the whole timing of things. The game, you know, the, the pace of the NBA is just so much different and stuff. But uh, yeah, it's going to might be similar to like a Mitchell Robinson situation where Mitchell Robinson being a seven footer is a fantastic shot blocker, but sometimes he gambles a little bit too much and he goes for the shot block for the sake of getting the foul. And then he finds himself, you know, having issues out there. So I think it's going to be important, you know, for the backup centers to always be ready to go too, because James Wiseman is going to have issues with that. Uh, right now they do have Marquise Chris looks like still on the roster. I believe Kevon Looney, he signed up for a few more seasons on like a two year, $10 million contract or something. So, you know, um, I, I feel like when, James Wiseman's out in the game. He will be definitely be a part of the offense. I don't think it's going to be a situation where like Steph Curry doesn't want to like share the rock with him or anything like that. Like he'll definitely get those opportunities. But then when you see him, you know, going to the bench and stuff, it will be more of like your traditional Warriors type of offense. So it's going to be a lot of fun to watch though, man. Um, now looking at James Wiseman's like strengths and weaknesses, just so we have like a good idea. It says uh, he has a great frame with long arms and excellent agility. So that's going to work perfectly in a... Uh, Steve Kerr offense post up a mid-range game are on point he knows how to get his spot and body up against the defenders to create space very important the Warriors don't really shoot a lot of mid-range shots but uh like I said when you're missing Clay Thompson on your team if you can get offense from anybody else it's going to help out so that'll be great to see nice shooting stroke shows a lot of promise as a mid-range score with potential to expand his range to three I feel like he's going to need to expand his range to three um otherwise it's going to limit his game so much especially just being that mobile seven footer like if you can beyond that three-point line and teams don't know if you are going to shoot a drive to the basket then that's going to open up things for yourself on the drive kicking it out and stuff like that man so where if he doesn't add that three to the game it's like okay like when he's on the three-point line you just kind of sag off him because you know he's not going to shoot it and that's going to kind of limit some of the, what he can do with the basketball and stuff right man so says he's a force on the defensive end and he alters and blocks a lot of shots showing good timing quick elevation good shot blocking instincts which is good but can be different in the nba has size length and instincts that you can't teach so looking at some weaknesses still learning the finer points of the game such as playing with proper positioning on defense and making the right rotations and switches which was i was kind of saying um it says not a weakness more of an inexperience frame is a bit top heavy needs to add a lot more muscle to his lower body yeah i could see that being important but at the same time you can stay like strong on top where you don't get like bully too much or i guess where you can kind of like force stuff into the paint a little bit more but the lower body not having that will make you get beat up by guys like Joel and B, just plain and simple, right? So that is going to be important. Uh, he relies too much on his left hand when scoring in the paint. Definitely don't want to become predictable. Now, if he can have like a go-to like lefty hook or something, I feel like that will be important early on. I'd much rather see him early on uh just focus on like one or two decent post moves i mean even the post game is not really utilized that much in the nba anymore though so i'd much rather have him just working his three-point shot but if he can have like that quick you know lefty hook or whatever a lefty post that's fine if that's like his go-to i don't think that'll be too much of an issue i don't think he needs to exactly be a keen dream out there so he'll be okay uh and it says he uh he can get happy feet and switch his pivot foot leading to traveling violations and that's just kind of an experienced rookie thing i've seen so many guys already just uh in preseason make those type of mistakes i mean i'm a pistons fan a lot of rookies on our team and it says he needs to play with consistent intensity and develop more alpha dog tendencies important i feel like draymond green could be a good mentor for that i feel like draymond green in general is going to be good for him because draymond is like you know obviously he's not a seven foot center but he is kind of just like one of those like six eight top heavy framed players that's mobile and can do a lot of different things so if he can kind of translate that into uh dreams wiseman's game then the dude is going to be a force to be reckoned with right man but player comparisons if you're looking for like somebody to see him play like according to nba draft uh his player comparisons it says a light anthony davis anthony davis light i don't know what that means exactly <laughs> i don't know i have no idea what that means guys because anthony davis to me is not like a big huge guy like he's not like fat or whatever too over muscular like i feel like anthony davis is nice and lean pause okay pause we're done with this video but no wait uh two more players they say a bigger chris bosh really 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 like that comparison love that comparison i still think marvin bagley marvin bagley has not been around long enough to have guys compared to him really um and the final one is patrick ewing um i think the i think the bigger chris bosh is the best comparison man in my opinion so yeah we're gonna see it tonight or maybe you already saw the game guys let me know in the comment section below if you already watched the game what did you see out of James Wiseman? Were you happy with him in his rookie debut? Uh, or let me know if you're watching this before that. What do you expect out of him? What do you expect out of him and the Golden State Warriors going into the season? It's going to be different not having Klay Thompson out there. But regardless, Curry's back. 
Uber's a great scorer. Andrew Wiggins does things with the basketball. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, man. So I cannot wait. NBA season is back, baby. Was going to actually have a rebuild for you guys today, but then this came up. So I'm like, I got to talk about it, man. So really hope you guys are still enjoying these basketball talk videos. I am having so much fun making them. Just talking about basketball, guys. Like, that's what it's all about, right? Let's just talk, man. I want to be that channel where we can just talk, you know? And uh, we can hear your opinions in the comment section below. And yeah, it'll be fun. But yeah, that's all we got, man. Uh, as far as reactions go to NBA games, I will probably be doing some of my second channel extra crispy if that interests you. But that's all we got, guys. Peace out.